Watch bright and bright stars through the perilous fight. For the rampant we are, we're so gallantly Special guests are Vice Mayor Dr. 
Terry is here. Our assistant city manager, Mr. Alan Archer. Assistant city manager, Mr. Bo Clayton. President of the New Police Police Foundation and COO of the Boys and Girls Club, Mr. Rob Coleman. Thank you all for joining us and thank you to the Police Foundation for supporting all of our events and supporting our police department. In addition, I'd also like to thank um, senior pastor Jim Weston, who wasn't able to be here today either, but for allowing us to use this amazing sanctuary and this church to hold our ceremony today and the members of Mentor Baptist Church as well. So, At this time, I'd like to invite Chaplain Ben Rockwell to deliver our invitation. It's an honor to be here. Thank you. I feel like we should have Shannon sing my prayer. <laughs> really good. Uh, joy to be here. Every chance I get to be here to pray with you guys, I feel like increases my chances of getting out of a speeding ticket. So, <laughs> and the sheriff's here for my chances of increase. <laughs> Can we pray together? Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for the privilege that it is to join together and share in moments such as these, moments of giving honor. Uh, you remind us that where honor is due, we should willingly and rightfully give it. And so today, as there are uh, men and women stepping up into new roles of authority and leadership and opportunity, uh, we just honor them as they take these new steps. And Lord, as we distribute new titles and positions and responsibilities, Lord, may the weight of opportunity and the weight of leadership be real and tangible. When we take on these responsibilities, Lord, we pray that every individual today who is being honored in such a way would recognize that with all of the benefits of leadership also come the responsibilities to lead change and how desperately in our time now here in these days that we live in, we need leaders, leaders of integrity, of courage, of strength, of conviction. Lord, those who would understand the responsibility to lead for good and for change, that just because something has been done one way for so long doesn't mean it should continue to be done that way, but that the, the responsibility of leadership is to see the course of change necessary to lead people well to the common good. So we pray today that as we honor them, that you would give them the conviction, that you would broaden their shoulders, that you would give them vision and perspective for the days ahead, that today would not be an empty ceremony, but it would, it would be the beginning of legacies and lasting change in our city. We thank you for the leadership that you've given us in this season who continues to lead well for change and for growth. And we pray and celebrate that our best days in this city are yet to come. We thank you for our time together today. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. Because of Chief Street's compassion for young adults of this community, it's with great pleasure that I let you all know that we currently have the largest group of young adult police commissioners that we have had since the program's inception. So we're real excited about that. And as usual, we always like to invite one to come speak at our ceremonies. And today's speaker is Ms. Kyla Buckingham. She's a student at Mentorville High School and will now share a few words. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Kyla Buckingham. I am a sophomore at Mitchell High School, and I am a member of the Young Adult Police Commissioners. I would like to congratulate each and every one of you on this well-deserved accomplishment as you take this next step in your career. Truly, it is an honor and a privilege to celebrate this moment with you all. I have multiple family members who have served in law enforcement, and I have always appreciated their sacrifice and commitment to serve. Becoming a member of YPC has given me the opportunity to not only get to know more officers on a different level, but also a greater understanding of what it means to be a good police officer. In order to get where you are today, you have had to demonstrate good leadership skills and positive character traits. It is not always easy to do what you do, but every day you remain dedicated and ready to make a difference. When you serve the citizens of Newport News with compassion, it builds trust in the community. When you listen to others in their time of need, it shows that you care. When you carry yourself with integrity and make the right choices even when it isn't easy, it shows how much you deserve this advancement in your career. During this part of your journey, you'll be modeling the way for leaders of the future. 
People will be looking at you to teach them and guide them as they grow in their career. It will be a part of your job to motivate and inspire them. Sometimes when we take on a new role, we make mistakes as we're learning new things. But it is important to remember that mistakes help you grow. Don't let the setbacks get you down. There will be hard days, but it's in those moments that you remember how it takes a special person to do what you do and that God is with you. You save people. You help in their time of need. You work hard to make strong relationships with the youth in this community. You do all this and more, which is why I personally value you and your sacrifices. You make a difference. And it's been a, it has been an honor to be here this morning as you recognize your hard work and accomplishments. I wish you all the best you continue to lead, serve, and protect the city of Newport News. Thank you and congratulations. <laughs> my great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker today and I'm going to tell you a little bit about him because you probably already know who he is so <laughs> they sent me the short one share okay, so <laughs> yeah. um, our guest speaker today is Sheriff Gabriel Morgan Sheriff Morgan is serving his fifth four-year term as the sheriff of Newport News his first term of office began on January 1 2006 Sheriff Morgan is responsible for a budget which exceeds 15 million and a staff of more than 200 that provide a wide variety of functions, including the custody and care of more than 500 prisoners daily, the protection of our courts and judges, the service of court documents, and the enforcement of the laws of the Commonwealth. Sheriff Morgan also serves as the executive officer of the courts. Upon taking office, Sheriff Morgan immediately institutes significant policy changes that support his guiding principles of justice for all, service to others, and abiding love for his community. Sheriff Morgan serves on a number of boards and commissions throughout Hampton Roads. Most recently, in April 2021, he was named chairman of the Riverside Health System Board. In 2007, the Honorable Leroy Hassel Sr. Chief Justice of the Virginia Supreme Court appointed Sheriff Morgan to serve on the Commission for the Mental Health Reform. As a subcommittee chair for emergency and temporary detention orders, the sheriff's leadership led to major changes in the law. Recognizing Sheriff Morgan's commitment to service, then Governor Timothy Kane appointed Sheriff Morgan to the Interagency Civil Admissions Advisory Council. Sheriff was subsequently appointed by Governors Bob McDonald and Terry McCulloch to serve on the Commission on Mental Health Law Reform. Sheriff Morgan co-chaired Governor-elect Ralph Northam's Policy Council on Mental Health. He chaired the Newport News Gang Production Task Force and is charged with developing a comprehensive strategy to reduce youth violence in the city. He currently serves on Christopher Newport University's Board of Visitors. Please help me welcome Sheriff Morgan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I will tell you that it is my distinct honor and pleasure to always be among law enforcement officers uh, as they begin their career. And I can think of no other place I prefer to be this morning than to be with you. Uh, Chief Drew, Assistant City uh, Managers, and Vice Mayor Cherry, uh, it's important to see you guys sitting here because I started my career some 45 years ago. I would let that sink in. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have seen this professional ebb and flow. When I started, we were coming out of the turbulent times and cities were on fire and people looked at me because of the community that I came from and said I was crazy. Back then they referred to us as pigs. Those of you old enough to remember will uh, remember that. So before, and I say black, and I know the, the term now is African American and all that, but back then, uh, for a young black kid coming out of the inner cities of New York, uh, that wasn't the route. That wasn't the way to go. 
relationships with law enforcement was not at its best. Sounds familiar? You know, we got this national conversation going on right now. Kind of the same thing. But I stand here today to tell you to be resolute. And I stand here today to say thank you. Because with all of that as a backdrop, you said, I'm willing to leave. I'm willing to be that change that I know I can lead. You heard the prayer from the chaplain. And the chaplain talked about change. And just because something was done one way doesn't mean it has to be done that way. The future is you. Look to your left and your right. Understand that the changes that you thought about when you were foot patrolling, all the things that you were talking about, your sergeant and your lieutenant, that they were not doing, guess what? <laughs> it's now on you. Where the, the brass? Look over there, right? I had six pages of things to talk to you about. But when I got up here and I looked out and I saw you, I had a change. And I just decided I'm going to not read to you or recite what I spent a couple hours jotting down and just give it to you the way most of you get it when I see you with the gas pump. But when I back you up on the street sometime, I just give it to you straight and I give it to you all. First of all, thank you to the family and friends that are here to support you. They need your support every day. It's not easy. So with that, why don't you stand up and give them on the floor? There you go. You grab, give them on the floor. I know they come home and they're grumpy. And sometimes you can't even talk to them, right? Give them 5, 10, 15 minutes to decompress. The things that they're seeing, the things that they're dealing with every day is a failure within our society to do what's needed to take care of people. And as a result, we become the last line of defense, we become the first to be called. We see trauma over and over and over again. And sometimes they need a little bit of time to decompress. So thank y'all for being patient with them. You need to be patient with them because they're there for you. And when it's all said and done, leadership is lonely. Leadership is lonely. You're going to make decisions that's not going to be popular. You're going to enforce decisions that may not be yours, but it's not popular. But you have to do it, and you have to do it with the same spirit as if you birthed that idea yourself. Your organization depends on it. Leadership, there are a couple things. It's not, you know, some people say leaders are born. Leaders are not born. Numerous studies have been taken, and only about one-third of the qualities that are required of a leader is an eight that you're born with. The other two-thirds, a learner. You have to be a lifelong learner. You have to begin to learn the craft of leadership. You know, I told you 45 years ago, I'll tell you how leadership was. I told you to do it. Go do it. 
No questions asked. Yes, sir. Done. Right? Sometimes it was begrudgingly done. Guess what? This generation that we're working with today, isn't that right, Lieutenant Morgan? Uh, they're going to ask questions, but why? Why do we have to do it that way? If it's not critical, you should give them the opportunity to voice that, have that conversation. The days of just saying, this is it, the workforce that we're trying to bring in today is not going to go for that. So five qualities. you got to be self-aware and prioritize your own development. You have to prioritize your own development. Don't wait for your agency to do it. Don't wait for the chief to say, I need you to go to school. You need to be telling somebody, I need to go to school. You need to set goals for yourself while you're prioritizing your development. You need to set those goals, short-term and immediate. You need to take some time to talk to the sergeants and the lieutenants that went before you. And yes, you may have your ideas about doing it differently, but at the end of the day, you need to take all that in. You need to focus on developing the people beneath you. You need to prepare them to take your place. Hopefully, hopefully you're here for the long haul. And you want to be a lieutenant, or well, maybe you want to be the chief. You don't want to be like Mike, right? <laughs> be like Mike? No. <laughs> right? So at the end of the day, you have to prepare folks to take your place. You have to encourage strategic thinking. You can't just think about, how do I make it through today? Each of you will have your areas of expertise. You may have an area that you're assigned. And you have to think as a problem solver. What, what's causing this? Why is this happening? And you have to have this ability to look around corners. Because if you can look around corners, you can tend to anticipate and help to craft solutions to not only make your job easier, but to benefit the entire community. You have to be ethically and civic minded. I'm gonna let that sink in for a moment. Let's be honest. We get defensive sometimes when we get questioned. Is that right? Do we get defensive when we get questioned? Come on now. Everybody should be shaking their head north and south. But you know what? If there's no struggle, there's no growth. If there's no struggle, there's no growth. For those of you who lift weights, I saw somebody with his full sleeve and his, his shirt was busted. Stand up. <laughs> right? Right? Well, you know how those muscles got that big? <laughs> oh, you're gonna stand outside? <laughs> right? Well, you know why the you know why the muscles got that big? He broke them down. He got muscle failure. Right? And then as the muscles began to rebuild, it got larger, it got stronger. Every time we're criticized, it's an opportunity for us to have a takeaway, to learn, to look at ourselves and say, you know what? Should I lace these shoes up and walk away with it? Or should I just leave those shoes there? But we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be able to say to ourselves, you know what? Maybe we can do this differently. And if we're not prepared to do that, we're going to constantly have this conflict. 
So we have to create an environment where people can talk to us openly. And that the goal is not to just get in a bunker mentality, but our goal is to truly be the best that we can be. Because that's what we strive for. We strive to serve our community and be the best that we can be. We hold ourselves up as a model. Practice cross-cultural communication. Let me say this again. Practice cross-cultural communication. In the day of social media, we tend to get in echo chambers. We get into chambers where we hear people that think the same way we think, speak the same way we speak, do the same things we do, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if that's where you stay, and that's where you reside, you are missing the boat. You need to go out and talk to someone who doesn't look like you. You need to go out and spend some time doing something that you don't normally do. We're in the people business. If they have a mental crisis, we get called. If there's a drug overdose, we get called. If they got a domestic, we get called. Their bike's missing, we get called. It doesn't matter. We're there. So what happens when you show up? We have inherent biases. Everyone. And one of the things that we have to be able to do is acknowledge our biases and work to fully understand someone who does not look like you and I. And the more we talk and the more we interact, the better we'll be able to serve. And as leaders, you're going to have all kinds of folks that work for you. And you're going to have to figure out culturally why something may be different and figure out how to communicate with them and get them to be, because you can coach them, to be the best that they can be. You have to be enthusiastic. This job is grind on you. There are going to be days you're going to come and you don't want to do it. But as a sergeant, as a first line supervisor, you are the most important person in the leadership chain. Not the chief. He's not the most important person in the leadership chain. chain. And the reason you're the most important, you spend more time with the troops. You spend more time with the troops. You have the ability to make them feel good about the job, make them feel good about whether or not you support them. And that makes a difference. Because we are not going to be able to compete with everyone, with pay. Everybody has this pay thing going. I call that a death spot. Where you get to compete is by when you make people feel like you care. Colin Powell said it best. When the troops stop coming to you, it's a failure of leadership. They either believe that you won't help them or you can't help them. When that happens, you've lost their trust. And everything we do is about trust. The last thing is your integrity. Never, ever put yourself in a position as a leader where your integrity is questioned. And why did I say that? That's up and down the chain. If you tell your subordinate something, if you say you're going to check on it, do it. Don't say I'm going to check on it and blow it off. Don't say you're going to run it up the chain and go run it up the chain. 
your words are borrowed. They depend on it. Gentlemen, I'm glad that you stepped up. I'm glad that you said, I will leave. There are people that have been in this agency probably a whole lot longer than you. That they were patrolmen or master patrol. They are not leaders from the standpoint of saying, I will take on the added responsibility. What you are doing, this first step, is securing this agency's future. And for that, I salute you. Godspeed and good luck. Chief of the Police, Steve Drew. Well, good afternoon. Uh, we're going to redo the, the program next year. I'm not speaking that <laughs> There's just a couple things I got to do uh, before I make some remarks to you guys. So first of all, I know Kelly mentioned it again, but just for the record, I want to thank Pastor West for allowing us to be in this beautiful sanctuary. It's a beautiful church. I've been here uh, many, many times. J.P. Smith's a member of this church, and they do tremendous work in the community. And for to allow us to be here, I'm, I'm very humbled and very, very thankful. I'm also very thankful for the citizens that came here, family members, to recognize uh, sworn and civilian both who are going to be promoted today and, and receive some honors that well deserved. Before we go any further, I'll get back to you all. <laughs> you all supposed to be in class today. I'm, I'm going to be in trouble. Dr. Parker, I hope you're not live streaming this. <laughs> Um, just bear with me for one second, just for Steve, for my heart. Any, any of you that are currently or have served in the military, uh, please stand for me. Whether you're sworn officers or not, please stand for me. <laughs> Tell them they're getting old, it takes them a while to get up. <laughs> you know, things going on around our country, the beautiful national anthem that we heard today that matters, and I want to thank you all for the service that you do for this country. It does not go on and appreciate it. Thank you very much. So for those that are getting promoted today, sworn and civilian, for me and for most of us, there's a reason that we do things. There's always a reason. There's a reason that we're in a, a church today, and most of our promotion ceremonies, award ceremonies, graduations are in a church for a reason. I ask God to bless you and your families, to give you guidance and wisdom as you serve this community. There's a reason that we're here. There's a reason. You might ask yourself, there's a reason why you've got high school students, high school students, that are here to see you all get promoted today. Mm -hmm. High school students that are here to see you all get promoted today. Because they have a vested interest in this department, and higher yet, they have a vested interest in this community. They care. They also rely on you. You pull them over on a traffic stop, remember that. <laughs> Except Cameron, you let me know if Cameron gets pulled over. <laughs> Carrie Cox, I saw her. Carrie's here today. Carrie is a member of the NAACP in our city. She's an activist in our city. And she served on our selection panel when you all did your interviews. There's a reason that we have a civilian on, our, on that panel. There's a reason you just don't come before me. Like Sheriff Morgan said, we look at things a certain way. Citizens ask different questions. And they have, should have a say in how we police in this community. So Carrie, I want to thank you for the time and effort that you donated, that you know, donated to, to help us, guide us in decisions we make. So I'm just going to be brief, and then I'm going to give you one, one lesson just from this past weekend that you can take from me. Accountability. Sheriff Morgan said it, talked about, uh, you know, let me go back there for a minute, just pay respect for it's due. When Austin Stein lost her life in this city, serving this community, that was one of the first calls I got. And he didn't just call one time. 
He's called multiple times to check on me to check on this agency. We do a lot together with police and sheriffs to work hand in hand serving our community and with some of the staffing issues we have, we have to rely on each other. Right? I've seen his men and women jump on a radio call and handle it, back us up, things that they do for our, I just appreciate that. We had a phone call the other night, just called to check on me. We ended up talking almost two hours. That's why I was late. But that matters. Relationships matter. Relationships matter. You all in your new roles. I'm going to talk to the sworn first. I'm going to come back and talk to the civilian. A lot of things I'm going to say are going to be reflective of what the sheriff just said. He's a mentor to me. He's been in this profession longer than me. He's somebody that I will call and ask advice to. Those young officers, they're going to ask advice from you. There's an accountability. Each time you go up in the level of supervision, accountability increases. The patrolman, an officer comes to work, the detective comes to work, they're responsible for themselves. You all come to work, now you're responsible for 12. Not to mention the 50,000 citizens that live in each area, each precinct that you patrol. You're responsible for that. The sheriff's correct. You guys have more interaction with officers than I do. I see them at a crime scene. We may talk for five or ten minutes, I think, for what they do. I get briefed on whatever's going on. But you all interact with them day in, day out. You see them at roll call. You see their mood swings. You see when they're having good days and their bad days. I don't give you much training on how to judge that. I just rely on what your families have given you. Accountability is one of the key elements that I expect from you. Accountability is important. The second is I want you to mentor the men and women that you're responsible for that fall under you. Take care of them. Who needs what training? Who wants to go to a traffic division or a canine division? Or who wants to go into the narcotics? Who wants to go into the gang side? Who wants to be a, a, a crash investigator? Set them in the right course. But also individuals that have some, some struggles. They may not interact well with citizens, or they may get frustrated, or whatever those issues are, mentor them, help them, buff out the rough edges. Accountability, mentorship, and the other for me is lead. You will not always make the right decisions. That's right. And that's okay. There is no book. There is only one person that was perfect that ever walked this earth. You will not always make the right decisions. No one expects you to. But what I do expect you to is decide. Make a decision. And if it's wrong, we'll address it. We'll fix it. Not every bad decision is a discipline issue. The worst thing you can do is not decide. Because then we start to get unsure. And it's okay to say you're sorry. So here's my lesson for you. Last Friday, I gave three assistant chiefs a task. I needed them to look into a situation. Two of them are here. One's still hiding from me. <laughs> now, he couldn't be here today. Uh, but I, I asked three assistant chiefs to look into a situation. They did, and I didn't like the results. And I was frustrated. I was upset. You know, I took it out on those, those two and the other ones that's hiding from me. I took it out on them. Now, these guys I work with day in and day out. Calls, weekends, events. It doesn't matter if it's a tactical situation, but I was frustrated with them, with the results of what they looked into. That was on Friday. It bothered me all weekend, and I can't see their faces behind me, so if they make any gestures, let me know. <laughs> but Monday, the first thing, I'm sorry, Monday's a holiday. Tuesday, the first thing I did when I got in is I called them into the office. I asked Brittany to just hold all the meetings, and he talked to them, and I apologized. I apologize. I apologize to each of them openly, right? Because when we had it, words, it was in the same setting. Now they told me, Chief, we're good, don't worry about it. But it bothered me. Because I care about it. That's my family. You all are my family. This community is our family. Right? When I get upset with these commissioners, I gotta be able to come back and talk to them. I can't, tell, I can't tell you all, don't make mistakes, get it right every time. If you get it wrong, apologize, right? It's okay to say we're sorry if I'm not doing that. No. Sure. So I had to apologize to both of them. 
They both bigger than me, could break me like a twig. <laughs> but they, they were respectful, <laughs> and I appreciate them. The decisions to promote you all did not come easy. Nobody gave you those badges you're going to get pinned <clears> on today. I want the family to know that they earned that and deserved it. It's hard. The stuff that they're going to see, That's right. the stuff they're going to see are things that nobody should have to see. People can do bad things to people. Please run along with the tunes. <laughs> <laughs> that works perfect. See how that's it? <laughs> but the stuff they see, not only do they have to deal with, you're going to have 12 individuals that you're responsible for that are going to see those things, and you've got to manage that. Just last night, Chief Grinstead called me. We had a situation with an officer and a friend, and uh, 11, 12 o'clock, we sent a lieutenant. I don't know if he's here, but I know he went and handled that situation in the middle of the night just to make sure that officer and her friend were okay. That stuff matters. The little things you do matter. The interactions you have daily matters. When you tell somebody you care about them, that matters. And I'm telling you, I'm proud of all of you. You all deserve, family, they all deserve for their after day. I didn't give them anything. Leadership is hard. You have to make hard decisions. I am not promoting you to be popular. When you try to do that with 12 different people, oh my gosh. <laughs> you, that's not what I'm promoting. I want you to make decisions. I want you to do the right thing and have your heart and your mind lined up on what you want to be. Don't, don't, don't wave back and forth. The Crawford is Crawford. That's Sergeant Crawford. I know Sergeant Crawford. This is Sergeant Crawford is, People will respect you more for that. If they see you waver, they will play you against each other. But we don't have time for that. We have citizens that we need to take care of. I am proud of each and every one of you. Decisions we made on this promotion, Sheriff Hitt, the decisions we made on these promotions, those badges you put on, will affect the leadership in this department for the next 15 years. Maybe maybe 40, 45 years. <laughs> <laughs> but a sergeant, in the ages you all at in the years of service, even if you don't go another rank, you decide to stay at that level, or if you go on, chiefs, assistant chiefs, whatever it might be, it affects us for about 15 years. That matters. That means you have a lot of people come under you, and they need you. I need you. These citizens need you. I appreciate you. To the civilian that are getting promoted today, oftentimes we don't talk enough about the things that are going behind the scenes. Notice that just this morning, hey, where's those documents I was supposed to sign? <coughs> Somehow Brittany knew where they were at. I don't know. She made a phone call. I don't know. But you all, you all uh, that, are, that are getting promoted, the stuff that you do, the three ladies today, um, I want you to know that I appreciate you. It was not something that was just handed out. Um, I know I don't pay you enough. That was for the city managers. <laughs> <laughs> but to come on and take on that, that added responsibility, the long hours you put in, I see that. I see the stuff that you try to make better. I see the times that you cover for people. I see the times you stay late. I see the times that you come in early. To make sure that all this stuff behind the scenes works. I don't take that for granted. Guys are sworn sergeants. Don't ever take the civilian and make the things work behind the scenes for granted. They come in, they stay late, they do what you ask them to do. And we're very fortunate for the three individuals, that, three individual ladies that are getting promoted today. And I appreciate you. Very, very, um, those are hard decisions, but I am 1,000% confident we made the right decisions. And I appreciate you. I think we're, I think, Mr. Ark and Mr. Clayton, I think we're in good hands moving forward. I'm feeling good. We're going to put some badges on today. I'm going to have Kelly come back up. Chief Grinstead is going to meet me down. We're going to have, on my right side, they're going to walk up, and we're going to do the pictures here. She'll give you better instructions. She's got it all ready. Right. <laughs> but I'm going to ask the family to come up and, and pin badges when you see the flag with your family. We want to take a few pictures. Try not to go too long today. But I want you to know, graduations, Award ceremonies, but promotion ceremonies.
promotion before you're taking this department to the next level. Mm -hmm. And you all, sworn in civilian boat, are the future of this city. The city needs you. I need you. I love you guys. You guys appreciate it. Okay? Terry D'Amico. So when I call your name, if you would join Chief Drew and Chief Grinstead down front and with your family. Ms. D'Amico <laughs> joined the Lincoln News Police Department on January 22, 2019. During her career, she has worked as administrative assistant to records technician. She has completed her LDA and is working on her LDA too. She was promoted to IPR coordinator on January 24th. Join, joining her today is her son, Isaiah, as well as her daughter. No? <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Ms. Amanda Powell. Ms. Powell joined the Newport News Police Department on January 16, 2006. During her career, she has worked in Central Precinct, in the Recruiting Unit, the Training Academy, and in the Major Crimes Investigation Section. She holds a bachelor's degree in Criminal Justice and is an active member of Law Enforcement United. Ms. Powell was promoted to Administrative Specialist on January 24 and transferred to the Chief's Office. Joining her today are her children, Haley and Jackson. <laughs> Miss Brittany Morrison. Miss <laughs> Morrison joined the Newport News Police Department as an administrative assistant too in March of 2015 and was assigned to the records unit. In January 2016, she was selected to transfer to the Chief Suite, where she continued to develop her administrative skills. She was promoted to Senior Administrative Assistant in July of 2018 and assigned to the Internal Affairs Division. In June 2019, she transferred back to the Chief Suite as an Administrative Specialist for Patrol Operations. She was promoted to Office Manager of the Chief Suite on December 27th. Ms. Morrison is accompanied today by her daughter, McKenna, and her son, Bray. <laughs> Sergeant Jake Crawford. <laughs> Sergeant Crawford joined the Newport News Police Department on June 16, 2010 as a lateral transfer from the Richmond Police Department, where he had served since 2006. He started his career with NMPD in South Precinct. He became a Master Police Officer in January 2020 and then attained the rank of Corporal in August 2020. He also has served as a Field Training Officer and has trained 36 officers during his career. Sergeant Crawford received an Outstanding Police Performance Award in 2013 and the Life Saving Award in 2015. He holds a Bachelor's Degree in Psychology and Criminal Justice from BCU. He was promoted to sergeant on January 10th. Joining him today is his wife, Saranda, who will pin him. <laughs> sergeant George Figueroa. <laughs> I actually tried to practice that. <laughs> sergeant George. <laughs> Joined the Newport News Police Department on December 16, 2008. During his career, he has served as a member of the High Impact Patrol Unit from 2013 to 2016 and as the Gang Liaison Officer for Central Precinct. He served as a member of the Violent Crimes Reduction Task Force from 2016 to 17 and as a Field Training Officer from 2015 to 2020. 2020. He trained approximately 25 officers during his time as an FTO and also served on a panel for upcoming field training officers. Sergeant has held the titles of Senior Police Officer and Master Police Officer and earned the rank of Corporal at Central Precinct in August 2020. Has completed numerous, numerous trainings and certifications and received multiple awards including Officer of the Month, Outstanding, 
Outstanding Police Performance, Team Effort of the Quarter, and Team Effort of the Year. He was promoted to Sergeant on January 10th <laughs> and transferred to South Precinct. Joining him today is his wife, Alyssa, his two sons, George and Giovanni, his parents, Lucy and George, and his brother, Julius. He is being pinned today by his children. Brian Hayward. <laughs> Sergeant Hayward joined the New Purdue's Police Department in 2011. During his career, he has served on patrol with South Precinct as a field training officer on the Organized Crime Unit, Violent Crime Reduction Task Force, and Narcotics Enforcement Unit with North Precinct's High Impact Patrol Unit and with the Special Investigations Division's Narcotics Street Team. He earned the rank of Corporal in 2000, July 2021. He was promoted to Sergeant on January 10th, 2022 and remains in North Precinct. Joining him today is his brother, Todd Hayward, who is pinned. Sergeant with North Precinct Watch 2 as a precinct detective in the Major Crimes Special Victims Unit, the Criminal Intelligence Unit, the Fugitive Apprehension Unit, and as Corporal with North Precinct. During his time in these units, he has served on the Tactical Operations Unit for more than 10 years. Additionally, he serves as a general instructor with specialties in firearms and defensive tactics, as well as a polygraph examiner for the department. He is a recipient of the Life Saving Award and several Outstanding Police Performance Awards. He was promoted to Sergeant on January 10, 2022, and remains in North Precinct. Joining him today is his father, Dominic Liu, and his brother, Jason Liu. No. <laughs> coordinator for more than 250 officers. Sergeant O'Berry is a recipient of the Chief Carvello Award, three life-saving awards, two MAD DUI awards, and has been recognized twice as Officer of the Quarter and Field Training Officer of the Year. He was promoted to Sergeant on January 10, 2022, and transferred to South Precinct. He is joined today in being pinned by his wife, Savannah, and his children, Lorelei, Blake, and Ass. Sergeant Alexis Ortiz, Ortiz. Sergeant Ortiz joined the Newport News Police Department in February 2014. During his career, he has served on patrol and as a field training officer. He has held the titles of Master Police Officer and Corporal. Sergeant Artes holds a master's degree in critical incident management from St. Leo University. Additionally, he serves with the Army National Guard as a staff sergeant and was deployed to Iraq during Operation Iraq Freedom. Prior to joining the NNPD, he served as a Newport News Sheriff's Deputy from 2010 to 2014 and graduated from the Hampton Roads Regional Academy in Court Security, Civil Processing, and Jailer. Sergeant Ortiz was promoted to Sergeant on January 10, 2022, and remains in South Prince. Joining him today is his wife, Nancy, 
who is clean. officer in May 2021. Sergeant Perez Valentine holds an associate's degree in criminal justice. He was awarded officer of the month in January 2018 and officer of the quarter in September 2018. He was promoted to sergeant on January 10, 2022 and transferred to North Precinct. Yes. And joining him today is his wife, his son and daughter and two family friends as well as his mother, brother, sister-in-law and nieces who are here from Puerto Rico. His Ooh. wife, Michelle oh. Lopez. deliver our benediction. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and take a little risk here and uh, might have to brush up my resume after this, but that's okay. I'm going to do it anyway. Blame it on me. Okay, I'll blame it on the chair. Um, you know, there are times when Chief Drew will switch up the ceremony and have some last minute changes or additions, whatever. <laughs> so I decided to do that to him today. So we have our friends come in.
But we just pray for those who have stepped into these new roles today, like the sheriff mentioned, the responsibilities and, and, and the weight uh, of, of what it means to have that day-to-day -day contact with those that they'll be influencing. As Chief mentioned, the, the influence that this will have in the years to come. Lord, I pray that today there would be a real and tangible acknowledgement of the weight that now rests on their shoulders, different today uh, than yesterday. Lord, may they rise to the, to the understanding that leadership is the conscious decision to reject passivity, to reject the idea that there's an easier route than making the tough decisions. Lord, may they share the burden that you have for the souls of those you entrust them to lead. May they take on a passionate and genuine desire to fight for the well-being of those you've entrusted them with, as well as for the well-being of those in this city. Lord, knowing that as this city prospers, prosper, so too do we all prosper. May they lead with the ambition, the conviction, the vision, the determination, the promise, the recognition, the acknowledgement that the best days of this city are yet to come, and they play a role in that truth. We love you and give you the glory for this day. In your name, amen. Amen. Congratulations again. Thank you all for coming. This concludes our ceremony.